fact, uh, the sanctions uh, did hurt the Iranian economy, and that is evident in the number of people going to the streets and protesting the situation in Iran. But this, what happened, the assassination of Soleimani, in fact, reunited the whole nation behind the leadership, uh, portraying themselves as victims of an American aggression. So uh, I don't see the Iranian leadership will succumb to sanctions, and they could create problems always because of the sanctions, not necessarily directed against the U.S., but it could be against U.S. allies. I mean, the attack on Aramco recently was one of those evidence that is everyone believed that Iran has something to do with it, directly or indirectly. Same thing, the attacks on the four ships in the Gulf of Oman. So uh, the more sanctions will not solve the problem. I think there must be channels of, uh, of, of mediation, maybe the Swiss, maybe Oman, maybe Qatar can play a role, but I think uh, the, the two sides were able to contain this crisis and maybe there is a chance for both sides to reach out to each other. I don't know if you know or not, but European foreign ministers have been meeting in Brussels to try to salvage yes. the Iran nuclear deal. What should the Europeans be doing? And do you believe a JCPOA has, uh, you know, can last, can uh, survive? I mean, the nuclear deal, as you all know, had been, uh, had been uh, really. Uh, after the U.S. withdrew, it had been uh, under uh, pressure that it could collapse. The European, in fact, are trying to salvage this uh, nuclear deal because it's in the interest of Europe first before the Americans. And now, as uh, Iran is threatening to completely withdraw from the nuclear deal, the European Union is trying to uh, get involved and try to convince Iran to cooperate with them, and maybe they uh, thinking that might, if uh, Trump is not uh, re-elected, things could uh, change in a totally different direction. So uh, with, with this confrontation, I mean, the Europeans are to lose first. That's why they are rushing into this meeting in Brussels and trying to, to do something about it and to contain the crisis and calm things down because uh, it is, as I said, if they came out loser, if Trump came out winner because he's a being questioned in the Congress, as you all know. Iran came out as a winner because they unified the nation behind them. But the Iraqi government uh, isn't under well, pressure. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me move to Iraq and the yes. United States now under pressure to uh, withdraw its troops out of the country. Um, Iraq's prime minister made an official request from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Is that going to happen? Are the Americans going to listen and withdraw their troops from Iraq? It is almost impossible. I mean, the U.S. feels that it is, it is uh, 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 entitled to stay in Iraq because they put this kind of government, this situation. I mean, Iraq after 2003, it is uh, was tailored, was engineered by the United States. They put so much troops. They lost uh, over 4,000. They uh, lost trillions of dollars. They had many uh, troops there. They, I don't think they will. In fact, there were kind of cohabitation between Iran and the U.S. I was working in Iraq after the war, 2003, and I was eyewitness to the influx of Iranian, especially in the South, and at the same time, the U.S. troops were in Baghdad and the North, and they were kind of uh, uh, undeclared uh, understanding between both sides that the new Iraq after Saddam Hussein is divided between Iran and the U.S. And they lived finally, I mean, the first head of the state to visit Iraq after the occupation was Ahmadinejad, the Iranian president. And this kind of relation continues. So the U.S. now to just uh, cut okay. it short and leave, I don't think that will happen. All right.